Well, we're in an excessive heat warning today. Yesterday, I think we were in a extreme heat warning. Yesterday it was orange. Today, the, the little symbol on the app is red. So, <laughs> it's 95 right now with a heat index of 100 degrees. So, it's actually not as bad as it was a few weeks ago where it got up to 105. Now, they're talking about a 110 degree heat index pretty soon. But, you might be able to hear things falling down. There's actually kind of a breeze coming from the east. Feels pretty good. Now, inside the house, you don't get that breeze. But I tell you, there is a huge advantage of having all these trees surrounding the house. I know how dangerous it is having trees surrounding the house. Uh, I get it. It does worry me. But in the summertime, it's like air conditioning. <laughs> You walk out in the sun and it's an immediate difference. As a matter of fact, I went down and gave the chickens some cold water to cool them off. And I wasn't out there five minutes and I just saturated my shirt. Yeah, I don't know if you can see that. The sun really makes a big difference. So as you know, I've been talking about comparing off-grid lifestyles to preppers. And I feel like the off-grid lifestyle is just a lot better when it comes to an SHTF now I can't use the words but it's uh, stuff hits the fan let's call it that <laughs> somebody asked the question I'm sure it was a troll I think everybody knows what it is but regardless these preppers I've said many times now never get to test their theories test their stockpiles and that's all it is is stockpiles they spend bunch and bunch and bunch of money they sit around thumping their chest talking about how great they are on YouTube. Now I recognize there's preppers out there who, who have the whole system. And they call themselves preppers. But I don't call myself a prepper. I call myself off-grid living. It just so happens that I feel like off-grid living is better than prepping, stockpiling. Let's, let's try to keep this separate. Self-sustaining, off-grid living, prepping, stockpiling. There is a difference in these preppers stockpile. Don't get me wrong, I have my stockpile of food, but I don't call it stockpile. I call it food. We grow chickens, we raise chickens. I know a lot of people raise vegetables. I, I don't agree with that. I think a carnivorous diet is better for self-sustaining, but regardless, and then we can it. And so the reason we're canning it is to preserve the food that we grew. It has nothing to do with prepping. However, we're self-sustaining. We get to keep recycling our food. And then we have the eggs, and eggs pretty much feed us all day long. We could eat eggs all day long, supper and lunch. Now we are getting ready to get more chickens to be, start producing eggs. We got uh, seven Brahmas, with five of those are hens, and those produce eggs through the winter. That's the big deal. We, we were short in the winter. And then we got two more that uh, we're gonna let, lay eggs. They're probably getting ready to lay now, I would imagine, sometime real soon. Then we got uh, 15 chickens that we're gonna butcher. And then as soon as we butcher those or get close to butchering those, we'll incubate some more. See, it's also self-sustaining. Uh, the incubation process worked out wonderful. We uh, was able to incubate with the solar panels. It was incredible. I really didn't think we were gonna be able to do it. Now I did have to run the generator about an hour in the morning, hour in the evening. That will not be a big deal if SHTF actually happened because we would shut off the refrigerator. The refrigerator is what takes the most of our electricity. I wouldn't have to run the generator because uh, in the SHTF, the incubator would run just fine. Even on cloudy days, we wouldn't have any problems. Carolyn and I have been talking about, I watched a video this morning of a prepper, talking about the importance of having community in an SHTF. And believe it or not, her and I don't agree on this subject. It's rare that we don't agree on something. Now, I know that she was probably thinking most everybody else. And I'm stuck on my situation. So my situation is we're self-sustaining. So I'm gonna explain the differences. My situation, her situation, or at least thought process. And my thought process is we're self-sustaining. I don't know if I need a lot of people. We got all the food we need. We, we can grow our own food to feed the chickens. We got all that figured out and are doing. As a matter of fact, I'll show it again. Sunflower seeds. We can raise sunflower seeds here. Carolyn can turn a 50 pound bag of sunflower seeds into 250 pounds by putting sunflower seeds in there, watering them uh, for about a week or two. 
you know, dump it out, water, dump it out, and they grow inside the bottle. And we give that to the chickens every day. That's 23% protein, so that's all the protein they need. Calcium. Carolyn takes care of the calcium. She crunches up. Uh-oh, we don't have any out here. Well, every day she sits out here and crunches up eggs. Here's a little bit of eggs that spilled. I'll show you the eggs that spilled onto the floor. So these are all eggshells. That's the calcium. We got the chickens fed. They feed us. And now that we have more chickens, we're going to be better shape than we were before. So we don't need food from anybody. Water. We have all the water we need. We don't have any problems with that. We're going to get a hand pump. I've talked about that quite a bit. We're going to get a hand pump as a backup solution to the well. I don't think we're ever going to have a problem with the well. The well pump could go out, but I have a backup well pump. And we can run that off the solar panels, especially if we're not running the refrigerator. But if the well pump broke and we couldn't run it anymore off solar panels, uh, we'll have a well pump as a backup. We can fill buckets up. That's just a backup. It wouldn't be a primary thing. And I don't even think we'll need it, but it's just a thought, okay, what if something were to happen? It's a nice little backup to have. I mean, of course the backup could break too. So if you can't buy anything from the store, you got to start really thinking ahead. Well, then we have the natural spring down the road. It produces water. As a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure the natural spring down the road is what feeds our well. The only problem with that is people. Now remember, this is what this video is about. Needing people, not wanting people around. Well, then we have firewood. Was another thing that Carolyn brought up. To me, I feel like we have enough firewood to last the rest of our lives. Now this is all part of what I'm trying to explain to you about off-grid lifestyle self-sustaining. We've got 15 cords of firewood, but we only use about a cord of firewood a year. So that's 15 years of firewood. That gets me up to 65. Of course, I'll replenish until SHTF actually happens. I'll keep replenishing what we use. About three truck loads a year, roughly is what a cord equals out to. Of course, now we have all the trees here that we can cut our own trees. Then Carolyn said, what if your saw doesn't work? You're going to need somebody that you can barter with to use a saw. You know, get a saw or a saw blade or fix the saw or whatever the case is. And I said, no, if that's an issue, which I have two chainsaws, yes, we'll need gas, but you can get enough gas to run a chainsaw. But again, I have enough firewood, so I don't think this is a problem. I'm just saying, what if it is a problem? So we're going to have a... We have a primary system, which is 15 cords of firewood. We have our backup system, which is our chainsaws. And now we need a third system to make sure that if the chainsaws stop working, what are we going to do? Well, again, I got two chainsaws, so there's three systems. The fourth system would be, well, maybe we should get a handsaw like they did back in the old days. They have two people using this handsaw. That way we wouldn't have to rely on anybody if we need a fourth system as a backup. The only thing I think you really need is defense. You gotta be able to defend yourself. Well, we have to defend ourselves now. Probably not as much as we would in an SHTF. The thing that I always think about, if you start allowing people on your property to help you out, barter, whatever, now they actually know what you have. I've said in the past, we look poor. We live in a 12 foot by 16 foot house. It, it's, it's poor. Who lives in a tiny little house like this? So people aren't gonna to wanna to come to your house and steal things. But if you start inviting people to your house, now they know that you have food, a stockpile of food. They know you have chickens and eggs, firewood and water. They know you got everything they need to survive. So yeah, they may come and help you occasionally until they don't wanna help you and they just wanna take it. So now you're defending yourself. So the, it goes back to the water. Carolyn has said in the past, and again, I'm trying to be unbiased. I mean, this is just a conversation. We don't argue. But her thinking is we don't want to go down to the spring because there's people down there. Well, then why are we inviting people on the property to barter with? This is just the, the thought process, my thought process. But she has a very valid point. For those who have nothing, they're going to need to barter. They're going to need to have skills that they can trade or things they can trade. 
So for example, a family walks up to the house, they need to be able to provide us with something so they can get something from us. Or like the chainsaw blade. They're gonna want some eggs and some chicken to give us a chainsaw blade. If you have a mindset that you're gonna need people, then you're gonna have to be able to have the skills so you can barter with them. Because I get it that people say, oh, I got a friend that do this and do that. Well, they'll give you the shirt off their back. But are they really going to give you the shirt off their back if it's the shirt that they were gonna give to their kids? And so why are we defending ourselves? This is the big thing that preppers talk about, is we, we gotta defend ourselves from the marauders. I get it in the comment section. But then your very next comment you'll get is, well, you got to rely on people. You can't have it both ways. Either you're going to shy away from people because you you feel like they're going to want to take what you got, or you're going to build a community. Now, there's a third thing: is community. I hear a lot of preppers talk about you got to build up a community, it's sort of, kind of like a a commune or something. Well, socialism has never worked in the history of mankind. When the pilgrims came over, they actually started up a socialist system. They talked about, in uh, the writings of the governor, I can't remember his name, he wanted everybody to work the fields and the women to do the cooking, and then they would go to the market and they could have whatever food they wanted. Well, they were seeing that some people weren't coming to work, but they would go to the market and pick up food. So you'd have two or three people doing all the work while, no, and while everybody was eating and it just wasn't working. Well, finally, the governor said, this isn't working. What they ended up doing was giving out pieces of parcels of land. This is yours, this is yours. You work your own land, you do whatever you want. So if you click that super thanks button down there, I'd really appreciate it. So I hope I can inspire you to think it through so you can live your dreams. Thanks for watching.